The main law of the universe is uniqueness. But comparing people with each other is typical for the worldview of mankind. Not only people, but also their deeds. So the world scientific environment invented the term the second Tutankhamun, and accordingly, the second Howard Carter. It is about the discovery of the Golden Man and its author, Kemal Akishev. The territory of the pile of small stones, here and there alternating with numerous earthen ramparts, stretched from north to south for three square kilometers forming scattered royal mounds. The burial ground consisted of 45 large royal burial mounds, with a diameter of 30 to 90 and a height of 4 to 15 meters. In the western half of the burial ground, in a mound with a diameter of 60 and a height of 6 meters, there were found two burials after the demolition of the embankment at a depth of 1.2 meters from the level of the ancient horizon, central and lateral. In early October of 1969, the excavations of these mounds began. We had not finished excavations because rain started. We took out half of the mound where the golden man was found and left it until the next year. In 1970, we finished it and found out that the central main barrel had been repeatedly looted and fully destroyed. But nevertheless, we decided to check the entire area under a huge mound and when we had a bulldozer flatten the entire area, it suddenly hooked and dragged a log 10 meters away to the south from the main burial. It was clear that this was the second burial. The grave was made of spruce logs with dimensions of 3.3 by 1.9 and 1.5 meters high. In the left part of the grave, the warrior's head was laid towards the west. In the southern and western parts of the grave were placed dishes jewelry made of metal, brick, and wood. It was when we began to clear this wooden burial chamber of the Golden Man when the first gold jewelry appeared and we realized that it would be a rich and untouched burial. Our task was to leave everything in its original position, very carefully preserving anything, whether it was big or small, or petty as golden grain. The Golden Man is the conventional name of an archaeological find in the form of a Saka warrior dressed in gold belonging to the Stone Age. In 1969, 1970, the Golden Man was discovered by archaeologist Bekan Nurmuhanbetov and scientist Kemal Akashev made this monument of the Stone Age world famous. The method of thorough excavation gave us the opportunity to completely reconstruct clothes, headgear, shoes, all weapons and work on it quite carefully. It is now recognized by many experts of world science. 
We carefully sorted out the system of the numerous adornments placed on its clothes in the amount of more than 4,000 pieces. Fate itself presented Akishev an interesting discovery not only by the quantity of gold but also by the fact that the burial was untouched. So each plaque lay approximately in its place. But it still took a few years to put it all together, and it was only in the mid-70s when the suit was created. It was collected by Sadomsky, his friend and colleague. Kemal Akishevich was one of the first who drew his focus on the subject reconstruction of the Saka warrior, and due to him, a human-sized mannequin was created on which all the artifacts of clothing, weapons and the belt were reconstructed, and thus before us appeared a man who every citizen of Kazakhstan now knows as Altin Adam. The golden man's clothes were decorated with 4,000 gold ornaments. These decorations were tailored with images of snow leopards, moose, mountain goats, argali, horses, various birds in the animal style. Judging by the animal ornaments and cone-shaped headdress, it became clear that several thousand years ago, Saka tribes roamed on the lands of Semirechia. So Kemal Akishev suggested that the warrior extracted from the tomb was a Saka Tigraxauda. In the ancient Eastern Iranian language, Tigro means arrow, and the fact that there are four golden arrows on the headdress of the Saka warrior is just one of the arguments that Saka of the Semirechia are Saka Tigrahauda. The warrior and everything around it, I mean clothes from headgear to boots, were saturated with elements of sacredness, each of which bore a certain Saka worldview in itself. In the 7th-4th centuries BC, the Saka tribes were united in tribal alliances. At the head of a tribal union, there was a king elected by the military council of tribal leaders. A king was considered the favorite of God, the link between heaven and earth in the Saka society. One of these tribal unions was called Saka Tigraxauda, that is Saka wearing high-pointed caps. They lived in southern Kazakhstan in Jatisu. The armor and burial outfit found allowed scientists to recreate the appearance of the Saka Prince warrior. The magnificent clothes indicate that the golden man occupied the highest rank of the social ladder. He was probably a descendant of a Saka chief. The main purpose of the dress was to exalt the personality of the leader, raising him to the rank of a sun-like deity. Kemal Akashev. Saka lived in their native territory where they were born and created their culture. The golden man is the answer to the request of the steppe. We are creators of the steppe, steppe philosophers. I always thought that the Saka were just like that, and such people created the golden man. The man's head has a crown in the form of a high-pointed turban decorated with gold plates depicting horses, snow leopards, birds and trees with spreading crowns. The three parts of the pointed crown represent the sacred model of the universe. 
the otherworldly underworld, the mundane terrestrial world and the celestial world where the supreme deity Tengri reigns. Placing a golden crown on a prince elevates him to the rank of a sun-like deity and identifies him with the high priest, the god warrior. The prince is dressed in a thin silk shirt trimmed with an intricate pattern of gold plates. Over his shirt, he wears a kaftan decorated with cast gold plates, depicting animals and birds. The prince's suede trousers are tucked into high boots with gold plates glued in the shape of a shamrock. A sword in a sheath covered with red leather is attached to the right of the warrior's belt, and an iron dagger in a sheath with gold plates in the form of a galloping moose and a horse hangs to the left. Gold plates on both sides of the dagger have carved figures of a wolf, fox, mountain sheep, fowl, deer, snake, and other animals. The costume as a whole is a unique find that allows us to judge not only the level of art of the Saka era but also to try to restore the worldview of the Saka. After all, this costume is a symbolic image of the multi-story universe in which the chain of lives and deaths of ancient nomads took place. It can be argued that the splendor and richness of the golden clothes of the Isik Saka were not designed for only one external effect. The meaning of this wealth is much deeper. It must be considered in socio-political terms. Kemal Akashev Золотой человек в первую очередь не сколько как такой красивая яркая одежда, сколько оно глубоко His headdress on which the main attention is focused is called kulakh. Kulak means reaching up, and of course, every detail of the headdress is unique. Four arrows are four sides of the world, and the mountain Argali at the top is a sign of Tengranism. And this, of course, symbolizes that the entire clothing of the Golden Man was made with profound semantic significance. It is more likely that clothing has sense of not sacral but rather philosophical significance было составлено с глубоким смысловым значением и даже здесь больше было не сколько ритуально сколько философское значение для казахстана для казахстанской науки для казахстанской культуры значение этого величайшего открытия we are now just beginning to realize the significance of this great discovery for Kazakhstan for Kazakh culture and science in terms of gaining independence this discovery played an important role in the consciousness of our people, in raising the spirit, mood. How did our ancestors live? What have they given to the world community? These people are considered to be numerous and warlike, living in the east on the other side of the Arakia River opposite the Isidons. The clothing and lifestyle of the Masageri are like the Scythians. They fight on horseback and on foot. They know both ways of war. They fight with bows and spears and usually armed with axes. All their things are of gold and copper. They sow nothing, subsisting on domestic animals and fish, which the Arakia River supplies in abundance. They drink milk. Herodotus In modern Kazakhstan, one of the first who began to study the elements of the costume of the Golden Man that were not used in the first reconstruction was Krim Altinbekov, founder and head of the Scientific Restoration Laboratory, Island of Crimea, academician of the Academy of Arts of Kazakhstan for the preservation of cultural and historical heritage. Today, no serious research and restoration work in the field of archaeology in Kazakhstan is carried out without his participation. 
2006 году по инициативе нашего правительства было предложено нам сделать реконструкцию в новую версию «Золотого человека». Когда мы начали изучать и дополнять это... In 1996, at the initiative of our government, we were asked to make a new reconstruction of the Golden Man. When we began to study the location of his jewelry and weapons, comparing it with photographs and drawings of the excavations, the first thing that caught my eye was that he had a cloak. But Kemal Akashov did not use it in those days. There was also a bag on the straps where there was a mirror. Many things were not used for the first reconstruction. The matter is that a decayed log fell on the headdress during the clearing of the burial. It displaced some details of decoration of a kula. And when I began to study the objects of the headdress of the golden man, I realized that there should be a cross and a solar sign. The same sign is even on the carpet found in the Pazarik Mount, and in our view it represented a model of the world, the four cardinal directions around the sun. Works on the study of the costume of the Golden Man continues. By this time, new information on the Saka Scythian mounds were obtained, which allowed clarifying some elements of the previous reconstruction. For example, a form of the headdress was modified. Now the top of it is not sharp but cocked forward like the head of a bird. The solar sign in the form of a cross on the front part of the headdress was also defined. The lower frieze of the kulak in the form of a floral ornament was also changed. The zonal placement of jewelry in accordance with the mythological picture of the world has been clarified. The interpretation of the dagger, kimchi, was changed. Twelve changes compared to the first reconstruction were proposed for today. So the image of the golden man is not final and still occupies the minds of scientists historians and reconstruction workers. It is one of the fragments of the Golden Man's Akinak decoration. The base was made of wood with plating on top. The plating is a thin sheet of gold rolled out like a foil that covered the top of the decoration. This is a very complex technology, even today it is considered very difficult to perform. We nowadays use modern machines and they did not have such machines as we have today, but they still could do it. At the same time, this is not an only case. They use this technology everywhere, creating a great culture. The Scythians had a developed jewelry technique and technology to convey a variety of images. Not without reason, the art of nomads with its animal style influenced not only the art of Greece and the Roman provinces but also Chinese and Russian art. The beast in the images of nomads of Scythian culture is necessarily in motion, in a jump, flight, in agony, curled into a ball. Images entwined in a violent struggle. Animals devouring each other cannot leave anyone indifferent. Animal style is such a variety and magnificence of execution of images of animals that are widely presented subsequently in cultures of the late Bronze and early Iron Age wide along the Eurasian steppe. Their style is represented by images and rocks and finds and burials. It was a special symbolic language that conveys the unity of man and animal, the world of a living model in the vastness of space.
Вот, например, здесь пояс не ремонт золотого человека, но она сделана по технологии чеканки. И идет здесь еще, кроме этого, гравировка. То есть гравировка – это же тоже новая технология. Here is, for example, a waste plate belt of the golden man, but it is made by stamping technology with engraving used. Engraving is also a new technology for engraving. They had to possess good tools made of steel to cut the finest lines. На спине фантастический грифон. If you zoom in and look at this plaque under the microscope, you will see the finest work. Everything is seen to the pupils. It's an image of a moose with a fantastic griffin on its back. This plaque was worn during life. There are signs of repairs made, it is worn out. Look at these gorgeous images. And they created this all out of precious metals. They made jewelry out of gold, silver, copper, wood, carved out of wax. All these decorations survived, and we see the greatness of these people as masters, as creative people, as creators of new technologies, and as people who were able to live in harmony with nature. Comparing Isak findings with the materials of other excavations, Kemal Akashev suggested that the findings of gold earrings with the image of Kulans allow insisting on a local basis in the composition of animal style. In those works of animal style that were found in the Isak mound, not only finally introduced Saka into the great world of Scythian art, but also gave Akishev the right to speak about the existence of an independent school of masters of Semerechia. The warrior told us many things. Our ancestors created artistic pieces of work at the highest level, still striking the imagination. The skillful golden appearance of the warrior indicates the confident possession of the ancient masters of the technique of gold processing. It also revealed rich mythology, reflecting the power and aesthetics of the steppe civilization. Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, Seven Faces of the Great Steppe.